The thyroid is a butterfly-shaped gland that sits at the base of the neck. It is uh, responsible for a myriad of bodily processes and is absolutely essential to life. So it seems like everyone has thyroid disease or thinks they have thyroid disease. And the question is, why is that? Is it really the thyroid? Is the thyroid really the cause of all these problems? Well, the thyroid serves a little bit like the canary in the coal mine. What happens, fluoride, iodine, bromine, chlorine are all in a line on the periodic table, meaning that they share electrons and one can be stronger than the other. And iodine is one of the weakest ones. So fluoride can actually displace iodine and iodine is one of the nutrients that is essential for normal thyroid function. So this is just one of the external factors that has had an influence on thyroid function. Another thing that happened was in the 1950s, they, they um, began to brominate flour. They, they began to use um, um, a lot more processed flours and they, and they used, um, it, it, I think it used to be chlorinated, but because bromine was stronger, it, it w they could actually increase the shelf life and it would last longer by using bromine. So, so many of the, flow of the flowers uh, were then brominated to increase their stability and now all these flowers were put into all these processed food products. So, so now we had another ion that was, um, or another atom that, w that could replace iodine. So another sort of um, external factor for the thyroid to overcome. Another thing that happens with the thyroid, there, there seems to be a connection between gluten and Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Now, Hashimoto's thyroiditis is a condition where um, the, your body begins to make antibodies that will actually destroy your thyroid. So here, now here's, here's a, a big sort of divergence in Western medicine, functional medicine, integrative medicine. In Western medicine, it's like, okay, you're making antibodies to the thyroid. We can either give you some, we'll give you something to suppress those antibodies, to suppress your immune system, um, or we'll just wait and you know see if your body will just kind of get rid of it. Or, um, and whereas in functional medicine, the question is, why is your body making antibodies to your thyroid? Why would it do that? Your body's very, very smart. Why would it do that? So one of the things that we have found is that gluten seems to be a big factor in Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So if, you, if, if someone is found to have positive antibodies, it simply means their immune system is turned on and there's a lot of oxidative stress, meaning that their body's having a hard time. Their immune system is, is turned on and it is having a difficult time managing whatever's causing that. So if you take people off of gluten um, frequently, and their antibodies, titers will come down, meaning that their Hashimoto's will kind of disappear. Now, it doesn't mean that their thyroid gland is restored uh, because what's been damaged may not be able to be recovered. But that's just one of the internal factors, all the gluten that we're putting in uh, to our body, which is it's in everything we eat, it's in every packaged food, it's in many, many sauces, it's even in beer. So that's one of the things, uh, that's an internal factor that can be affecting the thyroid. So other things that can affect the thyroid include um, stress. So your thyroid is, is dependent on many of these other other hormones, and one of those hormones is cortisol, it needs cortisol in order to function and get into the cell where it needs to go. So when we have our high levels of stress now that, that we live under and people are, their cortisols are high all the time, it's not used to, there, there's, a, there's sort of the classic book is called Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers. And basically it's about how when a zebra is being chased by a tiger, its cortisol goes up and it's, it's running and running and running, but then it gets away from the tiger and the zebra goes back to eating grass, cortisol levels fall. Well, in our modern society, everyone is sort of like they're being chased by the tiger all the time and our cortisol levels stay high. And after a while, that begins to take a toll on the, um, on your body and all the many inner connections, interwoven connections of your hormones and all the signaling that goes on within your body. So stress is just one of the major, major factors that affects not only uh, the thyroid, but many other 
um, certainly many other bodily processes as well. Many women are taking estrogens in the form of birth control pill, pills, hormone replacement, et cetera, and the uh, estrogen cause, cause, binds the thyroid hormone and makes it unavailable to the tissues. So excess estrogens uh, impact thyroid function. That's also compounded by the fact that many of our, um, we have so many um, toxins that, that, that serve as xenoestrogens, and meaning that they act like estrogens, and that's like the BPA in your plastics acts as a xenoestrogen. So that can also impair thyroid function. People who are hypothyroid have a difficult time exercising. They have very little stamina. And okay, you know, you wonder why, how come my friends can go out and run miles and I can barely, you know, make it up a flight of stairs. It, it may be a poorly functioning thyroid. Not, I'm not saying that that's the only thing, but it may well be a contributing factor because um, people should be able to exercise. And, and if you are overwhelmed by depression and can't get out of bed and um, having sugar cravings and nothing seems to fill you up, then that may well be a poorly functioning thyroid. Some people are just blessed with a, a genetic propensity for hypothyroid disease, or some people like me live in areas where they had fluoridated water supply, plus maybe they had genetics, plus maybe they ate tons and tons of gluten. And so, um, and then um, iodine, iodine um, insufficiency is actually very common. We don't think it is because used to we had they iodinated salt and they um, we got iodine and lots and lots of things. However, many people, uh, because of the bromine and the fluoride bumping it off, there's actually a much higher incidence of iodine insufficiency than we really realize. And one of the things, if you have fibrocystic breast disease, then you might want to consider having your doctor look at your iodine levels or even try taking an iodine supplement. So it needs iron, needs iodine, needs selenium, needs zinc. All of these are absolutely essential for a functioning thyroid gland. It's very important for everyone that you really get your thyroid evaluated by someone who knows the difference. Just getting, just going to your internist who's going to measure your TSH and tell you everything is fine is not enough. It, it's just not enough. And I wish, I wish that I knew 20 years ago what I know now. I could have saved myself a great deal of pain. But um, it's really never too late. It's never too late. You can always, you, you find a doctor that can help you. And I promise you getting your thyroid right is absolutely essential. One of my specialties is dealing with people with hypothyroid symptoms and people with subclinical hypothyroidism. It has taken me years to understand it, and I've gone, not only have I gone through it myself, but I have spent many, many hours studying it and, and learning about the intricacies of managing hypothyroidism.